Okay, well that was weird. The uh, the microphone had stopped working for some reason. Like I guess as soon as I went live. So cool. Um, okay, let's start this over. Um, so yes, tonight's gonna be different. We're not playing Minecraft tonight. We are we are doing different stuff. Um, I'm talking about my therapy stuff. It's, it's right down there. That's what it says. It's, it's what this says right down here. But like, again, I, I just love like how true to the actual Milkstein the design is. Like, it's gorgeous. Like, it's it's amazing. Um, I got shirts coming that should be here tomorrow. If not tomorrow, they'll be here on Friday before stream, um, which will be great. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, I think that's about it. Uh, so, yeah. I don't have anything else. Okay. Um, so, I guess let's kind of go through this, um, give a little bit of backstory. So, um, I have been looking for a therapist for, I don't want to say several years, but it's been a few. Um, and like, it's been sort of a process that's sort of, that's ramped up little by little. Um, I, my brain's a little fried sometimes. Um, I, I have some, some tendencies that I don't really like. I have some other traits about myself that I'm trying to cope with that I also don't like. Um, so really the whole point of me going to therapy is to try to figure out how I can express some of this and cope with it. Um, so to kind of give you an idea of, um, I guess to kind of give you an idea of the process that I went through, um, a lot of people have told me that finding a therapist is usually like a really tough step and they're absolutely right. Um, you know, I, it's been sort of described as, um, is just kind of sitting down and talking with a friend about stuff, which is, which I can absolutely understand that, but the way that I operate, I, um, there's there there aren't really many people that know everything about me um and that's kind of like my own sort of i guess internalized security like let's be real i'm i'm a computer nerd okay i have been my entire life and so things usually relate to me in terms of um in terms of technology. Like that's just, those are things that I find relatable. So for me, because I'm very like protective of myself in some ways, um, I don't really tell anyone a whole lot of like I don't want to say secret, but like very personal stuff about me. Um, it's just kind of, you know, it's kind of my nature. It's just the way I am. Um, so to have this idea of going to a therapist and, you know, having them be like almost like a friend that you tell your, you know, you explain your stuff to, that's a little difficult for me. Um, because I am incredibly particular about who I tell things to anyway. Um, so it's just, 
um, it's different. It's 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 I I again I I play things kind of close to the vest, so I don't want to, you know, just talk with anyone about it. And I understand that under you know medical context that the information is is protected and secure. You know, when you go about it the right way, um, which we'll talk about more about that in a minute, because uh, there are some wrong ways to go about it. Um, at least for your own, you know, privacy and protection. Um, but when you go about it the right way, you know, that stuff is 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 secure. Um, but at the same time, you know, I still worry about. I, I worry a lot about what other people think, um, which is kind of like, you know, tip of the iceberg kind of stuff with me, but. Um, my point is it's, it was an incredibly long process of trying to find someone, um, that I, you know, really, um, feel comfortable talking about this kind of stuff with. So, uh, like I said, I've, I've kind of been looking for a few years, um, and like, tiny little bits at a time, just pushing myself a little more to do it. Um, when things got really serious with the pandemic right at a year ago, um, you know, all of us at work got sent home to work remote. So we are full-time remote, um, not just because of the pandemic now, but permanently. Uh, which is really good for me in a lot of ways because I don't have to deal with the commute. You know, I was dealing with like a nearly hour, about an hour commute in each direction um, just because of traffic. And because I don't have to do take that time anymore. Um, hi, Swaggy. Uh, because I don't have to do take that time anymore. Um, you know, I've got to... I've got extra time around the house now that I can, you know, take care of other stuff. So like I get up in the morning. Um, so Sabrina, she gets up, um, pretty early for work. Um, so I'll usually get up right behind her. And then when she leaves, you know, I'll kind of spend a little bit of time waking up and usually make myself a little breakfast and just kind of chill out for a little while, uh, before I come upstairs to work. Uh, sometimes I'll, um, you know, get some things done like, uh, hi, other Sydney. Yes, we are talking about therapy. I'm, I'm taking the very long way around. Um, so sometimes I'll, I'll do other stuff like, um, you know, do dishes or like little things to clean up here and there just cause, you know needs to be done and um, Sabrina she still has to go to work um, she still has to be on site for work so you know I want to make sure that I take care of things around the house um, a little bit but um, so it's you know being home and not having to make that commute has been like really good for me in that respect like I I feel slightly more productive around the house because I'm not burning commute time just sitting in the car. On the flip side of that, rah, 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 rah. hi Andrea. Uh, on the flip side of that, um, because I'm at home by myself most of the day, I spend a lot of time with my own thoughts. Now, I do have other stuff to distract me like um, you know, I, I spend a decent chunk of the day, um, like in meetings or, um, I'll talk to, to Lollipop cause he and I work on the same team at work together. Um, or, um, you know, I've got streamers that I usually watch during the day. Um, so just, you know, kind of stuff to keep me company or if I'm flip on the TV, now that there's a, a channel on a free streaming service that has like 80s episodes of The Price is Right on all day. God damn it, you know I'm there. Uh, but, 
there are still like the the times in between like whatever distraction may be where I'm kind of alone with my thoughts and you know the more I kept thinking about a lot of this kind of stuff because intrusive thoughts they happen you know I I think about things that I don't necessarily want to be thinking about um, or subjects about myself that I don't necessarily want to deal with but need to um, this stuff kind of comes up to the surface because I am you know by myself with my thoughts all day so um, you know we had a lot of stuff happen this past year um, Sabrina's brother got married and on the way up or on the way to to the ceremony because I ended up performing the ceremony um, you know I, we got into um, a, a fender bender um, you know not nothing terrible but it's been something that we've been having to deal with off and on for the last several months um, and you know stressors like that just kind of build up um you know from the big stuff like that down just down to like the little everyday things like you know, i don't see any of my friends on like physically um like every once in a great while we'll go and we'll have like a a socially distanced outside lunch where we'll pick up you know to go food and sit in our cars separated by a space or two and just yell at each other from across the parking lot while we eat which is really nice, but also not ideal for a creature like me. I'm a very social creature. I need to be around people. Um, that's kind of how I recharge. So when I'm not around people, you know, that drains me. And then we have everything else going on. You know, the like I'm worried in the pandemic because of you know, my mom is immunocompromised. She's got cancer that's in remission. So, you know, I'm concerned that if someone near her gets sick, you know, it could very well end up being fatal for her. Um, I'm worried about my stepdad, you know, her husband. Um, like the guy that raised me like I was his own son. Um, I'm worried about him because he's a black man living in my hometown of Brunswick, Georgia. And for those of you who don't remember that story from last year, where a young black man was, you know, murdered by two good old boys just for jogging while black. So... Um, you know, I, 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 these are the little things that like are already in the back of my head. And then there's the other stuff about myself that I'm concerned about that just comes up naturally. Um, so at a certain point in, you know, in the last few months, I guess I took it up to the next level where I was basically like, all right, I've got to sit down and talk to somebody about this and figure out how I can cope with, you know, these things. Cause it's, it's being a drain on me emotionally, mentally, and, you know, of course, physically, cause it, it's all intertwined. Um, so, um, I, I looked for months and months and months. Um, I, thankfully, the insurance that I have um, through work, um, we have access to a service called MD Live where you can remotely see doctors um, for basically whatever. Um, so uh, we, uh, I was looking through and, you know, the, the therapist that they have on there, they're it's it's all free which helps tremendously i haven't had to you know i it, it looks like it's just covered uh, cuz it's not an in office visit and so i wouldn't have to pay even a copay um which i imagine i would if it were an in office visit i don't want to go into an office right now anyway um cuz there's a fucking pandemic and i'm not about to leave the house like you know, we're at enough risk as it is because sabrina has to be at work every day and I don't want to put us even more at risk, um, especially considering right now, like I'm I'm the primary breadwinner in the house, so I don't want to put any additional stress on her. So I'm trying to be extra cautious. You know, I I just I that's again these like little layers of of shit that just pile up that I I worry about. Um, so. 
in the process of looking for a therapist, you know, it, it was it's really nice that I have access to this service where it's it's free for me because it's covered under my um, my medical insurance. Um, and I know it's secure because it goes through the insurance. It's it's actually a medical service that's provided. Now, this is kind of where it comes back around. Um, there are services out there um, where you can text a therapist. Um, and as much as I want people to be able to get the help that they need, because I believe everyone should have access to quality health care, whether that's physical or mental health care. Everyone should have access to it, period. Um, I am I do get concerned because some of those services, um, like um, Headspace and the like, um, those services are not tied to anything medical, necessarily, and your privacy is not guaranteed. Um, in fact, some of those services, some of the sketchier ones, while they do connect you with a therapist, they may not be a licensed therapist and your conversations may not be confidential. So when you are texting someone about, you know, these things that are going on with you, that data of yours, just like anything that you would post on like Facebook or Twitter or whatever, that data is, you know, being saved and processed somewhere by someone else, um, as opposed to something like a, you know, a service provided by my insurance provider, which is covered under HIPAA. Um, so, if you do need to to look for something like that, please, please, please be very careful. Um, you know, therapy is an incredibly private you know, style of, of, of dealing with things. And it, I know I would not feel comfortable knowing that my, you know, private thoughts and, and feelings were being analyzed by other people that not of my choosing. Um, but anyway, so, um, for me looking for, yeah, exactly. You got to make sure you're provided a HIPAA disclosure to sign. That's right. Um, and the service that I I go through, like they they have all of that in place when you receive care, um, like when you set up your account and everything. Um, so for me, you know, there's there's there were. Uh, a couple of parameters that I really wanted to, to narrow down um, to look for a therapist. Um, oh, first and foremost, um, I want to see a woman. Now, I guess kind of going, and maybe it's just because of like um, my childhood or whatever it may be, but... Um, you know, or in your case, Andrew, just tweet about it. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, so I I don't want a male doctor at all, whether that's like a primary care specialist, therapist, you know, whatever. I never want to see like I'm I'm the opposite. I I never want to I never I don't want to see a dude. I want to see a woman. I feel more comfortable talking to a woman. I feel like more, for me, more sensitive subjects are, are handled better by a woman. It's just the way that I feel like, you know. Um, and yeah, like Kohler, I'm with you. Like I, I sometimes just to get things out, I will absolutely tweet them. And if you follow me on Twitter, like you know that I will just randomly just spit shit out of my head. And it's nice to get that out. Um, but there are, hold on a sec. There we go. Um, there's, there's just really like, I, for like this kind of private stuff, you know, I, I want to, I want to speak to a woman cause I know that a woman will handle things in a more sensitive manner than a, a guy will. And I know that's not always the case. 
on for for both ends of the spectrum. I understand that's not always the case. However, I I feel like that a like a woman therapist, physician, whatever, um, has is is more empathetic and more like attuned to sensitivity than uh, than um, male physicians, therapists would be. Um, yeah, see, Sydney, that's exactly it. it's it's the empathy factor. Um, so let's see. So, Andrea, you're talking about your pattern of picking dudes. Uh, now, Andrea, I know you've seen a couple of different therapists. Um, is there, like, a particular reason why you've picked dudes? Or is that just kind of where you felt most comfortable is, is speaking to dudes? Because I know, like, for example, um, you know, you've got a really close relationship with your dad. Um, do you think it might be something like to do with that or is it just like your preference? Like you just feel more comfortable talking with a, with a, a man versus a woman. Um, yeah, like I, I like the, the overwhelming, you know, consensus here. It just, you know, it seems like, and again, dare I say, because all of you are women, I think that it would make sense to me because and again i don't know so please correct me if i'm wrong but for you speaking or, or having a physician that's a woman a, a man wouldn't understand things that a woman would because a man has never been in that position you know a man's never had to deal with the kind of things that you have um so it makes you know it, you feel more comfortable um uh, looking, you know, having those conversations with a woman because they they understand better. Um, yeah, see, Kohler, that's that's my thing. Like, I I can I would I I just feel more comfortable, you know, um, talking to a woman about these kind of things just because that's, um, you know, again, kind of going back to the empathy thing. Um, yeah, Andrea, this is that's that's one of the things is like finding that finding someone who has that kind of um specialty that you're you're looking for and i know that can be hard uh, especially with something like ptsd let's see yeah see i don't want someone who's clinical i want someone who like who i don't know just kind of talks through it with you um yeah yeah, and that's and that's that's I mean Sydney you're kind of getting to one of the overarching problems is again and I know like we talk about this a lot these days which we should um but it's kind of like the the concept of toxic masculinity where you know men will they don't express their feelings they you know you're expected to get over it and you you have to just you know deal with your shit um, whereas, you know, typically with a woman, you, you know, you work through those things instead of just like, Hey, I, this is your problem. Get over it. No, that's not how it works. Um, so you get a lot more again of that, that, that empathy to, to, then that understanding that I just feel like you, you don't get with a man because, you know, of kind of the way our society is built. Um, See, yeah. See, other Sydney. That's that's the thing. That like, there are things about me that I wouldn't want to tell. Like, I wouldn't want to tell a guy friend of mine, but I might feel more comfortable telling a a female friend of mine. It's just just kind of you know, that's just how it is. Um, yeah. See, and then and that's that's. And that's kind of my thing, Andrea, is like that's you, you kind of hit it there is um, I need like, you know, some answers. Like I just want to know why I, I am the way that I am, which I don't mean to sound dramatic, but, you know, there are things about me that, 
you know, I want to figure out why they are the way they are, adjust what I can, and like cope with what I can't necessarily adjust. Um, you know, I know that there are things about me that I can change. Um, I mean, you know, Sabrina can tell you, and Andrea, you you can even you you know this. I'm not the same person I was ten years ago. Um, you know, Sabrina and I have been together for almost nine years now, and you know, I know I'm not the same person that I was when we started dating when we met. Um, and she's not either, you know, she eats other foods now. She eats things other than chicken and, and potatoes. Um, oh, hi, Jess. Well, you do. I'm just saying you eat other stuff other than chicken and taters now. <laughs> Listen, you eat, you eat olives. So like, that's, that's huge. That's actually a big deal. Hmm. Chicken and taters are amazing. I know, I know they're still your favorites, but like you know, this is this is a big deal. This is like big stuff. Um, yeah, Elena, that's that's another thing with me is, um, I, you know, I if if I need something, if if I need some kind of medication, sure, that's fine. But I want to to try to. To work through the, because I don't, I, I don't necessarily think that I do. Um, I may need something for my anxiety, but we'll get to that. That's you know, we'll 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 get to there. Um, but I, if if I don't need the medication, then you know, if I can work through it just by talking with someone with a professional that you know understands how to deal with this kind of stuff, then I would rather do that because I think you know. Um, it's just it's that's I whatever works best for me. Um, yeah, and that's 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 the big thing, Elena. Is I wanna I want those coping skills. I like I wanna I wanna better know how to cope with that kind of stuff because like trying to figure it out on my own isn't working. Um, oh, I love you, Andrea. I'll see you in a little bit. Um, I, like. Trying to figure things out on my own doesn't work, and you know it's just like with a job, like with a with any kind of skill, like coping is a skill. Um, just like any other skill, you know, there are some things that that some people do well on their own doing it. Some people need assistance from others to learn how to do it. You know, um, like none of us start out knowing how to do everything, and none of us know how to do everything. It's just not possible. So, you know, being able to, to, to kind of hone that skill and, you know, f learn from a professional how to do it, I mean, why, you know, why not do that? Like, that's, that's what they're there for. They have the skills to be able to teach you how to do it, so it just makes sense to do it. Um, oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no, I'm I I don't I don't want to go down like the narcotics path. Yeah, that's just nope, nope. Like I know there are things like, and again, like I may need something for my anxiety. I don't think I do. I think it's manageable. I just need to learn how to manage it. Um. So, but I I you know I'm I and Sydney I'm trying to to kind of. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be a better person than I used to be. And, um, you know, I think we've all done things that we're not proud of or that we, you know, wish we could go back and do differently or whatever. Um, I know that, I also know that had I not made some of those mistakes, I might not be where I am now. Um, you know, it, it it's kind of one of those things where, if I had changed, you know, one decision here or there, then it might have set me down a completely different path. And, you know, I wouldn't have some of the people in my life that I have right now, or I might not have, you know, I like my, my career, my career is in a really good place right now. Like I have a really good job working at a really good place. Um, and so if I had, you know, if, I had changed something, I 
may not be where I am. Um, and that's the thing. Like, I, th- I think it's just about trying to do better. And again, I, I'm like 10, 15 years ago. I, I hate that version of me. I hate it so much. Couldn't like, I would go back and punch 25 year old me right in the mouth. I really would. Um, but again, you know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that, that shapes who we are. And maybe had I not made those mistakes, I wouldn't have learned. I wouldn't have gotten the experience that, this is, that I did. And, you know, I might still not be, you know, gr- I don't know. I, I just, I might still be kind of shitty and I don't want to be like shitty. Um, I want to try to be better. And that, I think that's, that's kind of all we can really try to do is just be better. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, so in looking for a therapist, again, I wanted to look for a woman therapist because I, I, I feel more comfortable talking to a woman. And um, I, uh, I wanted someone who had particular specialties, um, you know, dealing with anxiety. Um, I think I have some, some mild depression. Um, it's not for me to really decide like it's you know i'm i'm certainly not the professional which is why i'm looking for or have looked for a professional um is because you know i don't know um so i wanted someone that could that could you know that could truly tell me um so i finally found someone who looks like that they really have the specialties that um, that I, uh, that I would like to, to, to deal with. Um, and, uh, I also, you know, she just kind of based on, I do like a lot of reading into like how things are written. Um, so, you know, going on MD live, uh, I could see the profiles for each one of the therapists. So, um, you know, reading through their different, like, sort of their, like, little spiels that they write about themselves, um, you know, talking about what specialties they do and their methodologies and their education, etc. Um, you, I kind of get a feel for tone. Um, and, like, you know, there are some that are, that you can tell are, like, kind of no-nonsense. And I think for some people that works great, not for me so much. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a little shit, so I need someone who's going to be a little softer with me. Sabrina, don't you say anything. Um, so, you know, I need somebody who's going to be a little, like, more, I guess, compassionate and, and not so, like, you know, pushy or whatever it may be. I, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, but someone who's going to just take it a little easier with me, because... I'm one of my my biggest things is I'm really hard on myself. Like I'm incredibly hard on myself. I am incredibly overly self-critical. Um I I have tendencies to like whenever whenever I screw up, um you know, I will focus on that. Um now th- and that's not necessarily like everything. Um so like for example at uh at work you know, we joke about at work how I'm the one that typically breaks things. So, again, for those of you who don't know, I'm a software engineer by day. So I write code for a job during the day. Um, and uh, as uh, like writing code, you know, there are going to be bugs in software. That's just the nature of it because computers aren't perfect because people aren't perfect. So, you know, we're going to screw up. Things are going to happen. So the joke at work is that I, you know, I'm the one that, that usually breaks stuff when it goes out to our, like our live production environments out in the world. And for a decent percentage of them, it's true. I do break stuff at work, but I'm not worried about it because that kind of stuff, like I know how to fix that stuff. You know, this is stuff that I know how to fix and I can go back and, and figure that stuff out. So, you know, it's, um, it's one of those things where, going through and just trying to figure out this stuff about myself, I don't know how to fix that stuff. 
So when I make a mistake, like in life, I guess, like when dealing with other people, like if I feel like that I've, or if I know that I've like upset someone, or if I feel like I've, I've, I've wronged someone or whatever, that stuff really sticks with me. Um, like there are things like, like little conversations that I can play back in my head at any given point that could have been, you know, years ago, but there are little things that like I, I, I kind of latch onto and hang on to. And, um, I just don't let go of those things. Um, and so, you know, again, sort of being overly critical of myself, that's one of those just where I really, I'm trying to, to be better about that. Um, and that's, that's one of the driving forces behind why, you know, I finally decided I need to see someone like that's, that's kind of like the first thing that I want to, to figure out how to deal with. Cause I've got a list, I've got a whole list of stuff. Um, but I think a lot of it stems from, um, just being overly critical of myself. Um, uh, I tend to like, I hold pretty high standards for other people anyway. Um, you know, like again, kind of using the work example, um, we have just like in a lot of professions, we have different, um, experience levels for software engineers, for developers, you know, we've got junior, we got mid-level, we got seniors. Um, and I, you know, I tend to hold, you know, the higher up you are as far as that experience level, you know, I, I tend to, to hold, you know, people to a higher standard and, you know, and I think frankly, rightfully so, um, if you're going to do a thing and you're going to say that you do this thing at a certain level, do the thing and do it at that level. I don't expect anyone to be perfect. I, I certainly do not expect that. But I also expect that when you don't know things or when you do things wrong, you own it and you try to, to, to better yourself. Um, and, um, you know, I kind of take that to myself to an extreme level where I hold like sometimes impossibly high standards for myself. Um, like I'm very much a, a perfectionist as far as like doing things the right way. Like if I do something and it's not exactly right, then I, um, I feel like I, you know, I, I could have, I, I should, I need to, I need to do better. Like it's, that's wrong. I need to do better. Um, but yeah, like. It, it, you're right, it doesn't help that getting mental health care is difficult, expensive, etc. Um, yeah, just like I, that's, and that's something I was saying earlier, uh, was that, you know, being home by myself during the day, you know, I spend a lot of time with my own thoughts and um, kind of getting, you know, having some of those intrusive thoughts that just come in and say, you know, why are you like this? this is messed up, what is going on with this, you know, um, intrusive thoughts and some of it being anxiety, some of it being just, um, just, you know, dwelling on some of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it, that's, it, it, it had, it has amplified it some this past year for sure. Cause again, I haven't had the distractions that I normally have. Like, I haven't had the, I haven't had like the, the physical camaraderie that I normally have, like even at work, you know, being in the office, um, I'd come in the office and I'd chit chat with people on my team and we would go to lunch and, you know, we would, we would be around each other and, and having that physical presence was a big part of, of just, you know, recharging for me. Cause again, I'm very extroverted. Um, and those of you who know me know this, like, you know, that I'm like, <laughs> so was it a couple of years ago? I guess, um, there was a guy who was leaving the company I worked for 
and we were having like a little going away get together thing over at like World of Beer, I think. Yeah. And so a bunch of people went there and um yeah right going to lunch like fucking going to lunch that's it that's the thing like i miss going to lunch with people like holy shit jonas that's yeah that's like that's just just that just that tiny thing but it's so huge now like it's yeah um but so the guy's having a like a little going away get together um after his uh his last day so we all go to world of beer and um, I was late for some reason, like I was a little later than everybody else. So I walk out on the patio where everybody is and like everybody sees me and like makes this big deal of me walking in and like one of the newer guys that was there, um, or like one of the guys who was newer to the company, he's like, holy shit. He's like, you're like fucking Norm from Cheers. Like you walk into the room and he's like, I've never seen someone walk into a room with that kind of presence before. I'm like just kind of happens like it's it's not something i try to do it's just what it, what it just happens like it's just a thing um like i used to go spend a lot of time at this arcade um near downtown tampa over in a district called ebor city and there's this arcade there that i would drive by and the jukebox had remote play so i would play the 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 star wars theme on the way by and then when i would like park in the parking garage and like right before i would walk in the door i'd play the imperial march and like come in like i know how to make an entrance all right <laughs> so you know again i'm very extroverted i'm i got a lot of like showmanship tendencies just i mean i'm streaming for fuck's sake um but you know that just I, I I just have like this this natural like draw to people and you know not having that for a year like not having Ice that, needs that it natural for everyday hustling. Oh, <gasps> uh, Jonas, thanks for the prime sub, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, but not having that for you know an entire year, like I I just don't have that. Um, I, I, I don't get that recharge. Like, so I'm already like, I'm already running on fumes and then I have, you know, I don't have the distractions that I normally have. No, you're fine, man. Don't worry about it. That's what this is. This is, this is, a, this is a whole thing. Like this is, that's what this is here for. We're, we're here to, to do our thing. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just running off at the mouth for two hours. Um, so like not I'm I'm already running on fumes because of this and then I don't have the distractions that I normally have to kind of help keep some of that stuff at bay. So then that's just like on like so like this this kind of like I don't know like this little barrier is just like dwindling more and more and more. And so like, you know, spending a lot of time inside my own head is not great. Cause it's, it's pretty fucked up in there sometimes. And like, Jess, like you, I, I know that you get it. Cause like you were, you know, you're like, I don't want to say like life of the party, but you kind of are like, you're, you're the kind of person that you, you know, you know, people have like this, that feel this energy around you, you know? And well, like for better or worse, it's just the way it is. Like I, I don't necessarily try to do it, but it just kind of happens. It just, it just is what it is. Um, so, so now that I've kind of like, you know, found this therapist, um, I, I wanted to, you know, sit down with her, um, and kind of start working through some things. Um, so first session is, and I, Obviously, this is only my first time going to a therapist, so I don't know. But it feels kind of like standard boilerplate kind of stuff. Like things that they need to know anyway for anybody that basically any therapist worth a shit would need to go through. Um, so, you know, we start talking about things like um, uh, medical history... Uh, kind of like daily life and activities, um, you know, 
what do I do for a living? What do I do for fun? Which like at this point, hmm, like, well, and it's funny because like I'm, you know, I'm talking to her through this setup. So she sees basically this just minus all the stuff around me. Okay. Like, so, you know, not this, not this, not that, just, just the camera view. And of course the microphone. And so she's like, she's like, you do, uh, like broadcast and stuff. I'm like, well, I stream, but you know, I, I have a, a background in broadcast cause I used to work in radio. Um, so, um, I'm like, you know, for fun, I play video games with my friends and stream it on the internet for my other friends so that we can, you know, all just enjoy the, the stuff together. That's, that's it. That's what I do for fun these days. Um, you know, and I, I spend a lot of great time with Sabrina, but like, you know, they're just like the, 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 the outside the norm activities, I guess. Um, and this is, this is kind of it now. This is like my, my hobby now. This is the thing that I, I kind of, you know, spend my, my spare time on. And so, um, I, uh, I'm like, yeah, that's it. Like pandemic, like there's, what else am I going to do? You know, I'm not going to eat anywhere. Um, I'm not going to hang out at people's houses. We didn't do Nomster Jam last year or probably this year. Because, you know, that's, I mean, like we're, I don't think by the end of May we're going to be able to have, you know, 30 people in the house to feed them all, you know, grilled barbecued meaty shit i just don't think it's gonna happen um it sucks because nomster jam is like the the thing that i look forward to the most every year because that's like that's my super bowl that's my super bowl is nomster jam like for those of you who are unaware nomster jam is our annual memorial day barbecue so on memorial day sunday we invite basically everybody to come over and bring side dishes and desserts and shit because we cook a fuck ton of meat. And I'm talking like chicken, hot dogs. Like I did an, a whole turkey. The um, like we've done we've done prime rib roast before. Like um, we usually do a bacon explosion, which is basically just like a giant pork loaf. Um, and like I just that's you know. That's it. That's 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 my Super Bowl because I get to cook for people, which I love to do, and they all come over and hang out, which I also love. So, and then we usually do stuff in the middle too. So there's usually like they come over, they eat, we play some video games, or we watch a video of a train in Norway for four hours. You know, whatever. Um, but yeah, like I have fun doing that stuff. Like. I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I have fun, you know, doing it and posting it. So, you know, I'm glad, you know, people are, are enjoying it because I, you know, I enjoy doing that stuff. Um, bacon basket. I could make a bacon basket probably. I would have to reinforce it. Maybe with skewers. Anyway, um, but, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I, you know, that I enjoy doing and we just haven't been able to do it because we've, we've all been at home, you know, or, you know, at least isolated, whether it's at home or out in the wild. Um, cause I'm, I'm pretty sure Jess, I'm pretty sure you just, you just live in the woods somewhere. And that's, that's, I'm convinced now that you just live in the woods. You're, you're a woodland creature, which is probably why we get along so well. Cause I am of course a bear. Um, but yeah, so like we don't get to have Nomster Jam, which you are all invited to, by the way. Um, and yes, Allie, you will be coming down for Nomster Jam once we have it. Um, but it's just one of those things where, you know, all these things that I normally do, I, I, I can't. So, you know, that's it's it's really hard for me to to deal with stuff you know because i don't have that that kind of of you know normal activity that i'm used to 
And so that's what I told her. I said, "This, you know, th- these things that I normally would do, I haven't. I can't. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about my safety. I'm concerned about the safety and health of those around me. You know, um, and again, if something happens to me, you know, that could affect a lot of other people. Like if I get sick and I'm not able to work and and I like I lose my job or whatever it may be." That affects Sabrina. That could potentially affect her, you know, her mom, because if I get Sabrina sick, we may end up seeing her mom and getting her mom sick because we go over and and visit her mom and, you know, have dinner with her sometimes. And, you know, we just want to, you know, we want to try to help take care of her because she doesn't really get out of the house very much. Um, So, you know, we're, we're, I'm trying to be, you know, overly cautious. Um, Sabrina and I have talked about it and, you know, she's, she's worried about me. She, she doesn't want me to be like, you know, when it is finally safe to, to get out and do things again, you know, at least once, once we're vaccinated, um, you know, she's concerned that, that I'm, I'm going to have a a hard time kind of getting back out there and doing stuff. And she's right. Like I'm, I am. Um, it's kind of one of those things that I haven't done, I haven't done it in a long time. And I don't know, being in, being at home is, it's almost kind of turned me into a bit of a hermit. Like I don't like going places. I don't want to go places cause I'm, I'm worried about what could happen if I were to get sick or if I were to get someone else sick. Um, so, you know, that's something that I you know, I told her that I'm, I'm concerned about cause I do, that kind of goes back to my anxiety, like, you know, worrying about shit that may or may not happen. Um, and kind of, you know, focusing on that, which probably not great and probably something I need to work on, which is why I'm seeing her to begin with. Um, and let's see. Um, she asked me like what kind of, you know, diet I get. Do I, you know, eat like healthy? Do I eat a lot of junk? Um, and I mean, it's, it's fair balance. I think like I'm not, you know, I'm not a health and this is what I told her. I said, I'm not a health nut by any means, but on the flip side of that, I'm not sitting here, you know, like chowing down on like, I don't know, garbage all day long. Like, I tend to still make, like, semi-healthy stuff. Like, most of what we eat around here is chicken. Um, I eat a lot of vegetables. I mean, sometimes, you know, I'll have starches, too, because fuck me. If, if I don't have a plate of pasta at least once a week, you know, I'm going to lose my shit. Because I'm convinced that there's some Italian blood in me somewhere. Somewhere. But, um, you know, like, I, yeah, I got fruit. I got, you know, I got my craisins back here. And, like, even the the trail mix. I mean, yeah, it's like it's a little fatty because of the nuts, but it's got a lot of protein in it. Like, yeah. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, eating bonbons, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I'm, I mean, I do pretty decent. Like, yeah, sure, I indulge. I mean... For fuck's sake, look at me. Like, I didn't get this way because, you know, I was shy about eating, but also I'm not eating total trash all the time. Like, my favorite meal is a steak with roasted asparagus and tomatoes. That's it. That's my favorite. Um, Maybe throw some potatoes, mashed potatoes or rice on the side of that, but that's, you know, that, oh yeah, the calcium from the milk. Oh, God, the milk. And it's 2%. It's not even, you know... It's not even whole milk, so it's reduced fat. It's like half the fat of whole milk. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm I I have a decent diet, and it's it's something it, it makes me happy. Like it's it 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 gives it's it's kind of comforting, you know, eating things that I like. And um, yeah, I have treats. Sure, I got I got fucking like. A box and a half of cream eggs downstairs because tis the fucking season for cream eggs. Um, 
And I mean, I'm not like, yeah, but like you're way more active than I am though, Jess. So like I'm, I sit most of the day. You were like, you were out like wandering around and shit and you like, you're getting a lot more like, you know, activity than I do. So, you know, it's, it, it, it's one of those things that kind of balances out. Um, but, but yeah, like that's, you know, I've got the, I, I've got the dietary stuff pretty well handled. Um, you know, I'm not like going overboard by being trying, trying too hard to be healthy and making myself miserable cause I'm not eating anything I like, but I'm also not like going super shitty. Although I did get gout last year, but that's fine. It's fine. It was once it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Instagram versus reality. It's fine. I just I I indulge on Instagram a little, but you know, it's fine. Actually, the stuff on Instagram is fairly is fairly like true to 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 what I eat semi regularly, like, you know, nothing like too wild. If I get something a little out of the ordinary or if I I'm, I'm particularly pr- proud of a plate of food, I'll I'll post it, but you know, whatever. Um And so then she kind of goes on to ask me, you know, we've talked about, you know, sort of, you know, my daily life, um, my, my dietary habits, which of course that can feed a lot into your, your mental health, um, just like it does with your physical. Um, and then she asks me if I've had anything, um, happen to me that I would consider traumatic. Um, so, uh, which Yes, and this is what I told her. Yes, but I don't necessarily think that something that like affects me in a large enough way to where like it it like like a daily life sort of thing. Um, and she and I will talk about that at some point. Um, and when we do, I'll talk with you all about it. Um, but it's it it absolutely is something that could be that that would be traumatic but it's not something that i think has has really like heavily shaped me or affected me in such a way like i i was able to compartmentalize it enough and and kind of deal with it on my own to where it's okay i think so i'm not i'm not terribly worried about that um so i told her we 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 we'll get to that eventually but you know, I don't think it's I don't think it's really a a huge factor for me. Um, and so at that point, that's when she you know she kind of goes into it. She's like, okay, so you know, you know, she saw that I put down that like feeling anxious was the reason that I I came to see, and so she asked me. She's like, you know, what's what are you kind of hoping to get out of this? Um, and so I told her, you know, this, I have these, I have these particular issues. Um, I have a couple of like traits about myself that, um, I don't necessarily like, so I need to to try to learn to cope with them. Um, and, you know, I think starting with the biggest one, which is, you know, trying to be less overly critical of myself. Um, and again, I think that's kind of where a lot of it stems from is just having that criticality, having that, um, you know, just, just being hard on myself, like expecting things from myself that I wouldn't necessarily expect from someone else. Um, where the way my therapist put it was, you know, so is, do you have, you know, are you that way with, with other people as well? Or do you kind of give them the benefit of the doubt? You know, do you, are you, you know, more lenient on them as far as your expectations? And, you know, I would certainly say that I, I am more lenient. Um, again, I, 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 I think I have fairly high expectations of people, um, especially, you know, depending on the scenario, but, I also have realistic expectations. Again, I don't expect anyone to be perfect. I know that I am far from perfect, but you know, I also expect people to, to try. That's, that's my biggest thing is, you know, if, if you're going to do a thing, 
Like, give it your best shot. Like, don't half-ass it. As Ron Swanson once said, don't half-ass two things. Whole-ass one thing. And that's what I expect from other people, is is for them to whole-ass things. Like, just, you know, give something the, the, the attention it deserves and give it the effort it deserves. Um, if it doesn't work out, that's okay. Not everything does. Like, that's just the way life is. And... You know, no one's going to be great at everything they try or that they do, but, you know, at least learn from it and knowing that you gave it your best shot. Um, for myself, I, I kind of tend to get to a point where I, if, if what I did wasn't the best, then I need to figure out what I did wrong. And I'm not terribly competitive. Um, I, I mean, I can be in the right scenario, but I'm not, you know, like, I'm not a terribly competitive person. Um, but I do kind of, you know... I do beat myself up a little bit if what I do wasn't the best that could be done about it. Not like just necessarily better than somebody else, like not comparatively necessarily, but if it's just not, you know, if it's not my best, if it's not the best, then I need to figure out what I fucked up. Just the way it goes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's really the, the thing that I'm, I, I want to work on starting out because I think if I can if I can deal with the um, if I can deal with that stuff first I think it might make some of the other stuff a little easier to deal with um, so in kind of talking with her about you know just this first stuff and again first session is a lot of just getting to know you, um, getting to know me and, you know, um, kind of starting down the path. Um, one of the things that she said to me is she, she likes to tell people that they need to have more grace with themselves and she, she doesn't necessarily mean grace by like it's textbook definition, but more like like allowing yourself the chance to like not necessarily mess up, but to not be perfect. Like, cause you're not going to be perfect. No one is. Um, you know, I, the example that she kind of used was, you know, she let's say she's going home from work. Okay. And there are two directions that she can take home from work. Um, she goes one direction and turns out there's a wreck and she gets stopped and, you know, she gets stuck in traffic because there's an accident. If she had known that there was going to be an accident, she might've gone the other way, but she did the best that she could with the information and the skills that she had at the time. She did the best that she could. That she like, there's, there's nothing she could have done differently. Um, so, you know, that's one of those th things where, you know, the decisions that I've made in the past, they might not have been the best decisions overall, but maybe they were the best decisions that I, that I could make at the time with what I knew and, and, you know, just kind of the way I was at the time, um, or it may have been what I thought was best. I know now that they might not have been the best decisions, but, you know, there's nothing that I can do about that now. Um, Jess, you can absolutely recommend a song. Yes, please. Um, so, you know, her concept of grace is just kind of, you know, giving yourself that benefit of the doubt and knowing that you did the best that you could, um, 
with the information that you had at the time with the you know with what you knew and a lot of the stuff that I do now like a lot of the decisions that I make and the actions that I take now you know I make those decisions based on those lessons that I've learned from those past mistakes um I know that it's you know I I know that I can't go back and change those things um you know the best I can do is if I feel like that I've I've you know wronged someone or hurt someone you know I can do my best to to try to ask for forgiveness um you know and and kind of you know let them know that you know I'm you know I've learned from that and kind of tried to grow but you know if I knew it's it's kind of like one of those if I knew then what I know now you know I didn't I didn't know you know or I I just got to try to 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 learn from that stuff and and keep moving forward um so that's that's kind of the the basic gist of of what our first session was um so yeah there's there's like i said there's there's going to be a lot of other stuff um that we're going to we're going to talk about um but there's really not a whole lot else that you know we went over in that first session cuz again you know it was like 45 minutes in the first 30 minutes or so we're getting to know me um so you know that's the thing that i kind of i got to you know kind of work on for the next session which is in 3 weeks from yesterday <gasps> ns what's up buddy um so that's what i kind of got to work on for the next session is starting to come up with you know more of these things that i want to to address and you know maybe it'll kind of get down to some of the root of why i am you know so tough on myself um and you know kind of learn how to deal with all this stuff together um but yeah that's i mean that's that's most of it so you know anything that y'all want to ask me or um, any kind of questions that you have about me about you know trying to find a therapist about um, that first experience if you have you know if there's anything that I haven't covered or anything that y'all want to know um, please feel free to ask because that's that's what I'm here for tonight is to answer any of those questions that you might have um, this is you know this is yeah this is this is kind of for y'all as much as it is as it is for me. Um, I mean, I think it it I I was nervous as fuck leading up to this tonight because you know this is a lot of talking about my um, talking about how fucked up I am, which you know everybody's fucked up to a degree, but some more than others, and I feel like I'm I'm a little. I'm a little extra janky, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a serial killer. So I guess I got that going for me. Um, yeah. And S I, I mean, I, I think you're right. I think we all are. I think it's just, uh, it's just learning to, to not be as hard on ourselves when, you know, when I, when I should be, um, a personal therapist hunter would, yeah, I honestly wish I had one. Um, and I, I think the therapist that I have now, I think she'll be good. Um, again, we're only one session in, so maybe by the end of the next session, we both decide, Hey, maybe she's not the right person for me. So I look for another one. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, Elena, you say that, but I can still be pretty janky. So, I love you too, Jonas. Um, so, so Jess, it wasn't it, it it wasn't difficult for me to get the therapist. It like it was the, like the actual insurance part of it wasn't because you know um, through my 
my insurance provider, my health insurance provider that I have through work. Um, we have access to a service called MD Live, which lets you get virtual appointments um, via like your via their website or their mobile app. So you go in, say what you need, whether it's like um, like a doctor, um, like a physical doctor, a uh, a therapist, a psychiatrist. Um, there's something else I forget, but when you have something like that. Um, you go in MD Live, and for me with my insurance, like my copay is zero for that because it's not an in-office visit. Um, no, and you're fine. Don't worry about it. Um, so it was, um, it was free for me to do. So thankfully, because the insurance coverage that we have where I work is actually pretty good. Um, uh, I was able to do that for free. Like there was no cost to me to book the therapist appointment. So um, that was really, really nice. Like I'm, I'm really glad for that. Um, so NS, like you said, you've previously had bad experience with therapists and scared to try it again. I, I can absolutely understand that. Um, like I currently don't have like a primary care physician. I don't. Um, the last couple that I went to, um, they ended up like closing their practices or retiring or whatever. Um, and so like I would have like two, two appointments and then I would have to find a new one. And that's not to say it was a bad experience. They were, they were great, but it's like, because I'm so incredibly particular about like the medical professionals that I want to see, um, it's it makes it a lot harder um, for me to tr try to like to you know pick someone because you know I just I want to I want to make sure that I pick the right person but also I know that it's a process and it may not be the right person the first time um, you know I just it's just kind of the nature of it you know I understand that but you know I I. I still needed to get out there and try. Um, coming from like the perspective of having bad experiences, I can absolutely understand why that would shy you away from trying it again. I get it. I totally get it. Um, you know, it's it's really it's hard enough to find one, much less find another one after you've had a bad one. Um, that's part of the reason why, you know, I, I always prefer, you know, um, female physicians and therapists versus male because, you know, and we had this, we, we talked about this some earlier, but, uh, you know, that's, you, you get, you get a level of empathy typically um, with a woman that you don't, you know, you don't always get with a man um, just because of sort of that, you know, archaic ingrained mindset that men usually have about, like, here's your problem, you need to get over it, whatever. Whereas with a woman, women tend to be more, you know, receptive, more empathetic, um, and a lot of times more comforting than a man would be because, you know, they have different life experiences, They, and they, you know, that reflects in their work um, in the way that they, they deal with, they, they, they deal with certain things. Um, yeah, Jess, it, it, it does, it does kind of suck being, you know, not having that insurance because you're self-employed. I'm, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's a lot harder. And that's, that's one of the things that, you know, we were talking about earlier too, is it sucks that, you know, I, I believe that everyone, everyone should have access to the medical care that they need, whether that's physical mental, emotional, whatever it may be, they should have, they should, that's those services, that care should be readily accessible to them at any time. Anybody should be able to just go into a doctor's office, whatever kind of doctor that they need, say, hey, I'm having a problem. I need this taken care of. And they don't need to worry about, you know, whatever it may be, whether it's cost, convenience, whatever, they should not have to worry about that. And unfortunately because it is so expensive and not accessible 
especially mental health care, it's hard for people to get the help that they need. Um, you know, not just because it's, it's difficult to do, but it's also, you know, difficult to get a hold of. So, yeah, I'm, it's, 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 it's tough when you, when you don't have the access to it that you really should have. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, again, that's why I'm really, I'm really, um, fortunate that I have the access to it that I do. Um, and you know, it's, it's really just, you know, the only, the only hurdle that I've had to go through is actually doing it not necessarily, you know, um, having access to it. So I'm, I know that I'm very fortunate in that regard. And I honestly, I think it's, you know, if, if I, if I have that access and I don't take advantage of it, especially knowing that I need it, I mean, you know, that's, that's kind of stupid on my part, honestly. So, um, but yeah. So what else y'all got for me? This is, we got plenty of time. I got, I got all night. And if, uh, if y'all in the, if y'all want to talk on voice, you know, you want to get into the, the discord and, and talk on there, you know, that's, then you're more than welcome to, to jump in. Well, yeah, I know, I, I know, Ali. I, I mean, it's, it's, okay, let me say it would be, it would be irresponsible of me to know that I need the care and have the access and the means to it and not get it. So no, not necessarily stupid, but not, not the wisest decision to, to not take advantage of that care while I can, I can, I can get it. Um, Let's see. So the biggest problem I've noticed in my friends group and others that I interact with is mental health, especially with what's going on in the world today. Yeah, like it's, yeah, uh, I'm lucky that I get to go to work, but it's just going to work alone in a shop and it's almost worse than the old days of arguing with people every day. I feel the insanity of being alone some days. Today was one of those days. Yeah, NS, I, that, and that's kind of what I was touching on earlier is, you know, I'm, I've always been in an office with people and I love being in an office with people and being around them. Um, but, um, you know, now that I work at home, you know, I'm alone during the day when Sabrina's at work. So yeah, it's like, it's great that I have a job and that I'm, I'm safe from not having to go into, you know, an office or a shop or whatever it may be. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm kind of alone with my thoughts and it even like having stuff around and having, you know, distractions or people that I'm, I'm talking to during the day online. Like it's, it's not the same. It's, it's just not the same as being able to be out with people and having that, that human connection, that human interaction. Um, and no, Ali, I'm 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 sorry. I don't I and I certainly don't mean to imply that it is it's stupid not to get it. I I just it's it for me for me personally, um, I like I have I have the the means. I have the access. Like for me, like it it makes no sense for me. And this is probably coming back to me being too hard on myself. Um, but it makes no sense for me not to take advantage of that care when I, you know, I'm, I've, I've got it all right there just waiting for me. Um, and you know, your problems are different than mine. Um, you know, you talk about your depression and your chemical imbalance and that's, you know, those are, those are things that you, 
that, you know, you know that you struggle with and, and I'm sure that just compounds the problem for you. Um, you know, it's, it's just like a, it's, it's tough. It's tough to do. It's like taking that first step or taking that first step all over again. And I imagine taking that step a second time is even harder than it is the first time. Because when you've been through it and you've, you've gone through that, that, that whole process and then things don't work out for whatever reason, I can imagine it's even harder the second time around. I don't know because this is my first time going through it. Um, this is my first time, you know, seeing this process for myself. Um, and it was hard enough. It was hard enough to take that first step. Like I said, it's, I've been trying to figure this out for years years and years and it took me that long to take this step the first time so you know doing it a second time i cannot imagine how much more difficult it is um but you know again for me i feel like that yeah and jonas you you're probably right it it's probably is a double standard um but you know, on the flip side of that, I, I'm a very much a get shit done kind of thing, you know, get shit done kind of person. And if, uh, you know, if I'm not getting it done, then what the fuck am I doing? Like this is, you know, I'm not at that point, I'm not even holding myself to the standard that I hold for other people. Like you say, you're going to do a thing, do the thing, like do it. Um, you know, and I've, I've been saying for years, I'm, I need to see a therapist and I'm, that I'm going to find someone and actually do it. And it took me a while to do it. And, you know, it's, it is one of those things where it needed to be done. And I, you know, I've taken that first step. Um, so we're going to see how it goes. So. Uh, you know, I was telling Lollipop earlier that I really need to have like Twitch soundtracks or something set up because I'm like, it's going to be weird just talking with nothing else going on underneath. And he's like, you need some kind of chill ambient music. I'm like, yeah, that's, I never did set up Twitch soundtrack totally to get it like going, but like we do need some kind of like ambient chill music here at some point. Like they just, I wonder if there's anything in the YouTube um, audio library because they have a lot of stuff that you're able to use in both streaming and recording. Let's see. Yeah, I started playing with it in S and it's just like, like I don't want to deal with it. Like having to separate out, separate out the VOD audio from the broadcast audio and I just don't want to fucking deal with it. Like it's just, no, I just don't want to deal with it. Let's see, we got Calm. What do we got here? We got anything good? Uh, what else What else can I do? Genre. Mm, ooh, Ambient. Okay. Calm, Ambient. Let's see what we got here. Da, da, da. Don't mind me. I'm just looking through YouTube music right now. Oh, thank you for coming, Jess. I love you. I can't wait to get back up there and visit all y'all up there in Seattle. Good fuck. I miss that. I miss y'all so much. Let's see. What do we got here? Oh, there's a series. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. I don't like it. This is kind of weird. Some good, some good chill ambient music. It's funny because that last one I played was called Somnia. That's your, that's your, that's your chill ambient music right there. Supposedly put you to sleep. And 
This has like it's called interplanetary alignment, and it has sort of like a like a chill Mass Effect vibe to it, and I kind of dig it. It's it's kind of all right, like a Mass Effect One vibe. Hmm. This isn't bad. This isn't bad. Let's see. Wrestling playing in the background, yeah. All right, let let me let me play this for y'all because this is. Let's see here. All right. This is called interplanetary alignment. All right. So for those of you who have played the Mass Effect series, I think you'll see what I mean. Yeah. I love when Tom yells at things. That's that's one of my favorite ambient sounds, honestly. Like I love when he yells at things. And also when he gets drunk and talks about the light nipples. <laughs> so for Halloween several years ago, we have we have like this like spider web. Yes, the light nipples. <laughs> so we have like this this spider web thing, which is really just like um, like a big ass piece of, of like thin sheer fabric with like Christmas lights on it, but they're like, I guess they're like a, like tinted purple or whatever. So there, we usually hang it up in the corner of the living room. So we have this giant, like light spider web there. And so Tom sees it and he, he goes, he looks and he goes, <laughs> light nipples. <laughs> And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you drug fucking potato. <laughs> oh, but to be fair, Tom was drunk and he is a fucking potato. These are things, th these are facts. Use them as you wish. Uh, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. Let's see. Um, Zodiac structures. Oh, Tom always gets, he always gets grumbly when he gets annoyed with wrestling stuff. Uh, well, no, okay, so NS, I, I actually know Tom, so I know you, NS, because I've known Tom in real life for, like, I don't know, fucking 11 years, 11, 12 years now, something like that, um, so... Drunk Tom and Sober Tom aren't that different. He he gets louder and usually gigglier when he's drunk. Um, so Tom and I have known each other. Um, we met here in Tampa for like, yeah, right? Um, we met like, um, yeah, like 11, 12 years ago um, through like social media meetups like back when twitter meetups were a thing still like way back when um and so tom and i have been best friends for over 10 years um and we um when he he moved away from tampa um he moved up to uh, north carolina a few years ago for work um which actually that was Kind of my fault, but it worked out. It worked out for him. It worked out fine for him. Um, but I got him the job that ended up moving him up to North Carolina. Um, so wait, let me try this this song. See what sounds like. Yeah, we're gonna let that go for a minute. Okay, all right. Um, so so yeah. When I, I've been looking to get back into broadcast for a long time because I used to work in radio and I love broadcasting. I mean, I had this mic, like I've only been streaming for what, four months and this mic I've had for like seven years or some shit like that. Um, so, you know, I do broadcast, I do voiceovers and stuff anyway. Um, but I, um... 
I wanted to get back into like, I want to do a podcast. I used to do a podcast with an old roommate of mine where we would watch Star Trek and we would do like the mystery science theater treatment to it where we would like, you know, just goof on it the whole time. And then we would actually break down and talk about the episodes afterward. No, I'm not a total fucking nerd at all. Um, oh, radio. Yes. Yes. And as you get it. You get it. Um, so, uh, you know, the more I thought about it, like I, it, like as as the the pandemic, you know, kept going on, I was like, I miss being around people. I miss having human interaction. And with a podcast, it's typically recorded. Like, yeah, like a lot of people will broadcast it live, but you know, usually most of it gets recorded and then you know played back later. But with something like streaming. Um, uh, oh, I would love to get my licenses. Oh my God. I'd love to get my licenses and get my amateur license. And I almost thought about like getting like a little tiny, like, like hundred watt, um, uh, FM card and just having like a pirate radio station in the neighborhood. Um, so, um, I, I was like, you know, maybe I should look into the whole streaming thing because, I mean, streaming, I mean, it's it's huge. Like, it's it's a big deal. Um, and I know I was getting into it really late, but, like, um, you know, I just, I was like, well, what the hell? Why not? You know, it'll be something that I can do as a fun hobby and... Um, we can all just kind of hang out. I'll hang out with everybody in the chat and we'll just, you know, do our thing and whatever. Um, so, um, I'll pay you for that book. I'll buy that book off of you. I'm not kidding. Um, listen, Allie, your story with Tom is just, it's, it's wonderful and, and kind of hilarious and I love it. I mean, really you met him basically the same way I met Sabrina and that is on Twitter through a friend. So, um, so we, uh, um, we talked about it, me and Tom and I'm like, listen, I, I, you know, is this thing like, you think this is something I would enjoy doing? And he's like, he's basically like, I don't know why the fuck you waited until now to do it. He's like, you should have been doing this ages ago. He's like, if you do decide to do it, you know, let me know. I'll, I'll mod for you. He's like, I'm, I'm modding three other channels. I'm like, oh, okay. And he's, I'm like, so where are you a mod? And that's when he introduces me to, um, to Ayla, Mo, and Tab. And so um, that's kind of how I got involved is, you know, I started doing my thing, started watching their streams and, um, you know, watching a few others just to kind of get an idea of what's out there. And it was like, you know, I, I kind of know what I want to do with this, which is why I have all of this, you know, bullshit Chrome around me. Um, because this is, you know, it has a very like classic broadcast feel to me, you know, so not like, not like modern internet broadcasting, like all the kids do these days. I don't know. It just has like a, a very like television sort of feel to it and um i i enjoy that uh so i'm like well fuck it let's try it and see what happens and so i did and um you know this is one of those things where i come back and i'm like um is this gonna be one of those things where i um uh you know it's a hobby, but I'm going to end up being like, um, I need to be successful at this, which I am, I am by no stretch of the imagination successful at this four months in. Um, I mean, I'm doing good, good. Like I got people that play games with me, you know, four nights a week. Like what the shit? Um, like I didn't even imagine that I would th that that would happen. I just kind of figured like I'd throw up some video games, play them into the ether, and see what happens. And 
it's actually been kind of like like wild and I love it um, you John Snow yourself oh well, hello there yes I do John Snow myself <laughs> I would literally die to steal your sea lanterns. I know you would die. You did die to steal, try to steal the sea lanterns, you chucklehead. <laughs> uh, see, these, these two, these two hang out with me probably way more than they should. Way more than they should. Um, so, but like, it's, it's, this has turned into something that I, I never thought, you know, that would would happen I, you do grumble about it at least at least three times a week and remember this was your idea remember I, this realm was not my idea no this building was your idea. the boat was your idea I blame the realm oh you blame the realm for the boat clearly if the realm didn't exist the boat wouldn't exist well I mean, I guess that's that's fair, but I I I don't know, Ines. I guess I just kind of, um, you know, the thing that I that that I keep trying to tell myself, and that you know, these two, and especially Tom, uh, keeps trying to tell me is it doesn't fucking matter. Like I'm, I, you're having fun, just do it. It does kind of have like the Minecraft ocean vibes, and I I kind of dig it. Um, like, just you know, the whole point was I wanted to do this to have fun, and um, and I am having fun. Like, this is is it the same as having you know that physical in person interaction? No, it's not. But it's also not meant to be. Um, this is. This is like it's it's new and it's different and I I enjoy it. Um, and no, I don't know how to have fun without making a job out of it because when I leave my job, I go to my other job, which is my having fun job. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, but you know what? That runway looks goddamn good, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It also uh. You land on it pretty good. You can't. help save Lollipop's life. And several times. Much better than the boat does. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the boat was not intended to be landed on, apparently. The boat was not intended to be landed on. But you know what? It's a boat in the sky, so what are we going to do? Professional fun haver. That's, that's what I'm trying to do, Allie, is I'm trying to be a professional fun haver. And I'm doing okay at it, I think. It's, you know, I'm, um, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, it's just, I feel like sometimes I forget how to have fun. Um, just like, I don't know. <laughs> we had this discussion at work the other day. I'm a Capricorn, so, you know, working is part of what I do. And when I'm not working, I work, and it's my way of distracting myself until I die. And that's just the way I'm wired up. And I'm, I'm trying to, to, you know, be better about, you know, actually enjoying the fun parts without making them a job. Um, so I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, you know, doing what I can. But it's, uh, it's just like any of this other stuff that I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to be like. You know, give myself the benefit of the doubt. Um, but I mean, I've had more people come here tonight to, to watch and talk about the, uh, you know, my therapy stuff than we've had, like, come in to watch the gaming for most of this, which is kind of wild to me. Okay, this song kind of has like Minecraft title screen vibes. So for a mixer, I have here. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. So I, I, I do a couple of things. Um, I have a physical and I have a virtual mixer. So the physical mixer I have 
is an Alesis Multimix 4. It's a little tiny thing. And I have it because it's got USB. Um, it has USB like through and out, which is fantastic. Um, well, I love you too, Allie. And I, I cannot express enough how much I appreciate y'all coming to hang out with Old Bear while he's yelling into the computer box about random shit. Um, so let me see. Let me see if I can find... That's the effects. I don't want the one with the effects on it. This is it. This is mine right here. Um, let's see. Where is... Give me a second. I'm trying to find the... Let's see. I'll copy that. And paste. Reference. Okay. There we go. So that's the physical mixer that I have um, right there, okay? So the Alesis Multimix 4 USB. Um, the only thing I have plugged into it is the mic. That's it. Um, the inputs come in USB, and then I can send a mix back out to it um, via... Um, uh, via the USB so I can actually listen to all my mix downs and stuff in the headphones which is really nice um, oh it's crazy break time okay Jonas I have four flavors I have the original craisins I've got chocolate covered I've got Greek yogurt covered and I've got the trail mix do you want to me to eat one of those or is it dealer's choice you let me know um so, I use that mixer as physical. Chocolate it is. That's Elena's favorite, too. And like, whenever she redeems it, like, it's just understood. I don't even have to ask. Buddy, let chocolate me tell you. always the correct answer. I mean, chocolate is always a correct answer, yes. Mm. So, um... I use that as my physical mixer, but then I use this application called Voice Meter, and that's my um, – are you kidding me? It doesn't even show up in the list. Who oh boy. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, no, that looks like shit. Yeah, you can't really see it. Um, let's see. Let me look for an image of it. Yeah, here we go. So, this is, so this is the virtual mixing application um, that I use called Voice Meter, and they have, there's three different versions, so I have the highest version. It allows five hardware inputs, five hardware outputs, three virtual inputs and three virtual outputs so i mix everything together down in this um and so that's what i use that's the thing that does most of the heavy lifting audio wise um ooh, tagalongs mm, getting that chocolate and peanut butter it's a good choice good choice um Jonas, we've talked about we've talked about like tom's like how many points do i need for you to give me craisins that's actually been a conversation we've had several times. I'm still waiting for the uh, cranberry sauce redemption I, here. I know. i got to figure out how many points I'm going to make it. have to put like a 24-hour cooldown on it. 
just so I can make sure I get another can of cranberry sauce. But I do plan on adding it as some kind of redemption at some point because uh, I got it. It's right here. I got the can of cranberry sauce. You talk the talk. You got to eat the walk. <laughs> One can of cranberry sauce per stream. That's it. That's the... That's the limit. Only one. What if we ship you more cans of cranberry sauce so you have more cans? I mean, I always have cans of cranberry sauce. I always keep spare ones on hand, but, you know, I can't just have you you, you monkeys giving me, you know, making me eat cans of cranberry sauce by the pallet. <laughs> your therapist. So how's your diet? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, lately it's been cranberry sauce. Cranberry sauce. I'm, I'm on the sauce. How many, uh... Depends on how many points you got. <laughs> right? Uh, I'm on the I sauce. Try. What, you're, you've are you been drinking? No, it's cranberry sauce. I, be I bet you can't get I a hold of a pallet for, for cheap. Oh, my God. I do it for the hashtag content. <laughs> you, the hashtag content. Hashtag, hashtag fish, hashtag content. Hashtag cranberry, hashtag content. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jonas, you're emphasizing my. When you say my last box, you were emphasizing my. <laughs> your inner tract health will not be a problem. That's correct. That's correct. Buddy, let me tell you. I will be A OK -okay when it comes to that. Uh, let's see here. But, um. Yeah, um. Actually, my, my Girl Scout cookies, my favorites now are the uh, the s'mores and I keep them I keep them wrapped up in a Ziploc because you know once you open them they don't reseal besides these have filling ooh I'm gonna eat one actually yours last past when you open them Haba yours last past when you open them when I open my box of Girl Scout cookies they suddenly disappear I I pace myself because Girl Scout cookies only come but once a year so if I eat them all now, I won't have any later. And by later, I mean tomorrow. I have no self-control. Yeah, I have some. Yeah, the s'mores The s'mores are my new favorite. My, my previous favorites were probably the Samoas, because um, I'm a sucker for chocolate and coconut. Um, but the s'mores, <laughs> holy shit. And lollipops breaking out his tagalongs and eating them in front of me right now. It's all right. I got my trefoils here too, so you know, just in case. He's he's another person who knows how to pace himself. Oh, Thin Mints are Sabrina's favorite in us. That's like hands down her absolute favorite, which is good because I don't like mint, so she gets all the Thin Mints she wants. They're all for her. I don't know how to pace myself. I know how to just get a uh, get a crown in my mouth. Girl Scout oh, Wookies. Okay. Oh my god. Like like little Wookies with like the sashes and hats and shit and Girl Scout Wookies. Mm. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. What are the thanks a lots? I don't know what those are. What are thanks a lots? Apparently, Girl Scout Wookiees is a strain of weed. Fucking of course it is. <laughs> what what pun isn't a strain of weed at this point? <laughs> I, I am just... I am slightly disappointed in Google, but I did find a Girl Scout Wookiee, so I am happy. But yeah, the first, like, five images are... Weed is not a nice thing to look at. It's kind of weird looking. All right, let let me look at the images. Oh, wait. So it's like, so it's like these, but with chocolate like on the bottom. Like like half of it's dipped in chocolate or something. Oh, the French toast ones. Oh, the French toast ones. Yeah. Yeah, those look pretty good, too. Let's see what we got here. What we got here? I uh, linked you the uh, Google image search in random. Ooh, okay. Weed <laughs> looks like mold, yeah. 
Oh I'm my! Just like, <laughs> just yeah, we're like, not. Why is we're not touching. We're not. We're not. <laughs> that. <laughs> that is. <laughs> we do not look at that. Yeah. That. That is. That is. That is TOS, and we are not going to show that. <laughs> The one in general, though, is just an actual Girl Scout Wookiee. Well, okay, yeah, that, yeah, but like, yeah, like with the sash and with the, with the hat, you know, they're not shortbread, right. but a similar flavor. Oh, okay, so maybe like more like a butter cookie or something, Allie. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Ooh. This I have a link to contribute to this. Do you? No. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Damn it. Oh, Jesus. What is this? Oh, my God. Nope. Not even going to show it. It's in random, and you can go look at it if you want to. If it, it's yeah. just lollipop being a dick. It's fine. All right, so let's see. Um, the thanks a lot. Let me open this real quick and look at these. I love that there's a fandom wiki that's dedicated entirely to Girl Scout cookies. Oh. Oh. I don't think I've had those, but they look really good. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, jeez. Random, random has just devolved. Oh, God. What in the hell? Got a bunch of dicks in it. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Thanks, Jonas. Thanks, buddy. The last extra long one is just dumb. <laughs> Being a dick. Well, I mean, that that gif is literally being a dick. That's true. <laughs> the I was helping image is the best. I love that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I'm done stuffing my face for now. So, anyway, back to the topic at hand. Um, so, is there anything else that y'all wanted to ask me or talk to me about my first therapy session? <laughs> Cans confirms. Those are some dicks. Uh This has honestly kind of been a pretty productive stream, I feel like. Oh, the tab keeps going to sleep. That's why I keep the music keeps stopping. Bot, I just posted that. Like, I just posted that like three minutes ago. God no. damn it, bot. Damn it, bot. God damn it, body. That's it. That's it. Putting a cooldown on it. Where's cooldown? Where is it? Discord. There's an actual question. <laughs> fuck y'all. There's a the, fuck y'all. There's a there's a cool off on it now. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> there's a real question in chat now. 
So with the beginning of the conversation that I, for me, it was really, um, uh, it was really just kind of getting to know me, you know, it was just a lot of basic questions, you know, um, she had a couple of things about me, like age and stuff, but, um, you know, she wanted to know, you know, what I did for a living, um, kind of like my day to day, just really basic overview, just to kind of understand, I guess to understand what kind of like stressors or things that, you know, I had going on, um, my, um, you know, what I do for, um, what I do for fun, which, here we are, um, let's see, just kind of, like, basic stuff about me, and then, um, you know, what I'm looking to get out of therapy, like long term. And I think that's that's the thing that really is um I think that's really the, the, the biggest thing is I went into it, you know, having an idea of what I want to do long term and trust me, I have a fucking eighteen wheeler of shit that I'm gonna unload on her at some point, you know, pallet by pallet, but I also know that, you know, I don't want to do that all at one time. You know, that's that's a lot. I can't process it all at once. So, you know, this basically stranger isn't going to be able to process all of it at once either. So, go in, you know, going in knowing what I wanted to, to like the, the, the first thing I kind of wanted to address. Um, and like the big thing. Um, I think that helped out tremendously. Um, just, you know, having that idea in my head. Um, well, in like, Elena, it's yeah, but you've you've like, I don't know that you're necessarily avoiding it so much as you're just. You know, you're a little gun shy about trying to go back because you've you've also had bad experiences in therapy, right? So it's you know, it's it's hard to go back to something that's supposed to be good for you when you've had experiences that weren't necessarily good for you. If that makes sense. No, I'll own it. I'm avoiding it. Okay. I'm 100% avoiding it because there's way too much shit and I don't know where to start. So you know. <laughs> That's... I'm still in that phase. Eventually, I'll get back to the okay. I should stop avoiding this phase. Yeah. And Ali, I I kind of did the same thing. Like it was, you know, that's why I did it on a day. Like I planned it out specifically because I knew it would it would be a draining experience. Um, I did it on. It was last Tuesday. It was, um, after the end of the work day. Um, so like I knew that, you know, I wouldn't be able to do anything else really useful that day. Cause I know that that would be a huge drain on me. Cause again, I'm going to sit here and talk to a complete stranger and start telling this complete stranger, you know, personal details about myself that I have trouble talking with my best friends about. And it's, um... You know, it's, it's, it, it was, it was really draining for me. And I, you know, I completely understand why, you know, that's, that's a lot to, to, to unload at someone. Um, so, you know, I, I, Elena, you you say you know not knowing where to start, and that's and that's that was part of mine too. Because I mean, with my my list of stuff, it was kind of like trying to narrow down the narrow down to what was most important and what I wanted to tackle first. And they're not necessarily the same things. Um. So, like, there are things to me that are more important than this. Um, not that this isn't, like, and not that I'm trying to trivialize, like, 
um, like my self criticism, but, um, you know, I just, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm like that. I, I, I have like this whole pile of shit that I just need to, to dump out and deal with. And, um, I just want to make sure that I kind of like do it in a way that like will end up being most constructive for me. And I know some of it, it's going to be, it's going to be sensitive topics, like incredibly sensitive stuff. Um, you know, there's going to be very like sensitive and private conversations. Like, and there's stuff that I'm, I'm not going to share with everybody the details of, cause that's just, that's my stuff. That's my personal stuff. And I'm, I'm going to hold on to that. Like I said, there are a lot of things about me that like, you know, as sort of my way of protecting myself, I keep that stuff to myself. Um, but at the same time, I need to, to, to get it out and deal with it because it, it is going to be, you know, it is going to be a, a big deal if I don't take care of it. So it's... It's, it's trying to find this like balance between what I what I know I need to talk about and what I know is digestible for both not just the therapist but for me and finding that balance I think is gonna be it's gonna be a little difficult but um, you know one of the things that I'm gonna try to do at the beginning of this the next session is, straight up ask her, you know, I have, um, I have issues with like, in like this, this, in this subject area. And are those things that, you know, that you have experience with or that you, that you, you know, deal with, that you work with people on. And if it isn't, then the switch continues. Um, if it is great, that gives me, you know, something else to work towards um so i just uh you know i'm 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 cautiously optimistic and it, like if i if if the first therapist works out for me like i'm i feel like it's going to be a fluke like i just and granted, I, you know, I took, you know, a hundred years to find one. So God knows I've been fucking picky about it. But I also know that you never know how well you're going to have that click with someone until you actually sit down and start talking to them. Let's see. See, I go through therapists like some people go through TP. I just want someone to listen to what I have to say and just unload on. Someone that I can say what I feel and what I think will just be there for me and listen. Most people want to argue back and not listen to what I want to say. I've lost so many. I would call them friends at this time, but I see how blind I was. People buy that. It's hard being human. It is It is hard being human. NS, you're absolutely right. Like, it's, you know, it's... That's why that's why we have therapists is because if if being human were easy, we wouldn't have these problems, but we do because being human is hard. Um, and it's it is it is tough trying to find that right person like you know it's I mean it's it's like trying to find a companion, you know, someone that you, again you 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 click with it's it's that's that's not easy um and ali i i absolutely agree um you know there are i i have focused on things in the past to avoid dealing with things that i actually need to deal with um like Again, my self-criticism, that's something I need to take care of because 
again, I think once I start learning how to not be so hard on myself, um, it'll make the other stuff a little bit easier and lift a little bit of that burden. Because I think part of it is like, you know, I'm already tough on myself. And then I have these like these other things that I'm like, well, this is really fucked up. Like you're super fucked up. Like, why are you so fucked up? And I just, it's, it kind of compounds the issue. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, I think I just, I just need to kind of be guided in the right direction. Um, and I think that's, that's Allie. That's also kind of my, my biggest thing is I have a very hard time trusting people at that level. Like I'm a somewhat trusting person. Um, like if you fuck me over, or if, if you lose that trust, it's gone. It's toast. It's out. Um, but to talk about this kind of stuff, it does, it does take a lot to get to that level, um, for me. And so, um, this is, this is absolutely going to be a process. Um, and I know it's, you know, I know that I'm nowhere near the first or the last person that will have to go through this process and have some of the same concerns and issues or whatever, um, that I have had and that I will have throughout this whole process. So, um, you know, I, I want to kind of, that's, that's kind of why I want to, to share that journey. Cause maybe, you know, maybe together we can figure it out, you know, Maybe I'll be able to figure out my shit, and maybe you'll be able to figure out some of yours too. Maybe something that I, you know, learn through my experience is something that you could adapt through yours. And that's kind of the whole point here, I guess. Is is um is that shared sort of human experience? So um. Oh, I love you, buddy. Go, uh, go do what you got to do, NS. I appreciate you coming in tonight, man. This is, uh, this is, uh, yep, 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 yep. But I think, uh, maybe I'll do this like a regular show every, you know, couple of weeks or so. We can all just kind of sit down and, and, I don't know. We get together and talk about stuff and if if y'all want to you know, get together and just chit-chat and I don't know, we can start our own group therapy sessions if that makes any sense, if that's something that y'all would be interested in doing and just kind of talking through and working through everything. Um cuz it's you know, it's not easy going through this stuff. Um, and if we can all do it together, why the hell not? Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I mean, would that, would that be something y'all would want to do? Like maybe every couple of weeks we, we all kind of sit down and, you know, if you want to, and I am, I am, I am absolutely not saying anyone has to do this. This is just an offer that I'm, I'm giving to everyone. Um, that if you would like to come on stream and talk through stuff, we can just talk through it together. Um, you know, we that's that's why, you know, we're we're set up. We have, we have the we have the stuff in Discord to be able to do this. Um, you know, we have the technology. We can do this, you know, however y'all would like to do, but, um, you know, maybe we can figure out every couple of weeks or so we just sit down. So like maybe one week is an off week where we just kind of 
chit chat about what's been going on and you know what kind of stuff we've all been dealing with and you know kind of get a little bit of support from each other and on the on weeks or the on streams we can you know i'll go through my um my my actual therapy experience and talk about a lot of the stuff that you know um i discuss with my therapist and kind of continue sharing that journey if that's something that you know you'll want to keep doing so i'm totally down for it I've hardly touched my milk. I'm still, I'm still just super happy with like the quality of the mug. The mug's like half the size it should be. Like it, it is a little baby mug, but like, my God, like, hold on. Like my God! Like, look at this! Like, it's, it's this, but on this, like, I'm just. How does it work? No one knows. Literally, no one knows. There's a guy I used to work with, and he was like, one day, just as a joke, we were talking about pepperoni. He's like, "But what's in pepperoni?" He's like, "Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's just magic." I'm like, "It's pork sausage." He's like, "Nobody knows." The milk stein with the mug image with the stein on it. I know. <laughs> it's like magnets. How do they work? No one knows how magnets work. Let me see. Custom steins. I can get a custom stein. Let's see. Ooh, discountmugs.com. Ooh, custom-steins.com. Let's look at this. Ooh, already not secure. Love it. Custom relief steins. What? Stoneware, beer boots. <gasps> oh, we could do we could do a milk stein dos boot. I actually have like a like a big glass boot somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's I. Th it's downstairs somewhere. It might be in the garage, but I doubt it. I think it's in the kitchen somewhere. But I have like this big glass boot that you can drink out of. It's just... <laughs> what are... Fro oh my god, what are... Fro <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh. And now I want to watch the X-Files. Thank you, Jonas. Oh. Magnus are pepperoni confirmed. <laughs> can confirm. Oh, that's what I need. I need... I need a pepperoni magnet. Um, you know what else I need to do? I still need to. I still need to hang up. I need. I need to hang up your painting, Allie, because like I still have it over here, but I haven't decided where I want to put it yet. I might put it underneath the hundred acre wood map that I have over here. That's probably you know. I know Bean. I know. See, that's why. That's why. That's why I'm friends with Jonas Bean is because, you know. <laughs> He's the only other person I know that, that would just randomly go, what are frogs? <laughs> Cue the X-Files theme. Um, yeah, I gotta put that somewhere. Um, I gotta clean up this fucking desk, though. It's a mess over here, and I gotta do something about it. Also, I gotta get, like, a basket for the, the craisins. Because, like, I have them in, like, a tin pan... Like, like literally, like a foil pan, and that's that's. It was a temporary solution, but I gotta clean up this fucking dust too. It's a mess. I got like, what the hell do I have like caulk up here for? What? Why is this on my desk? I don't know. I I have no idea. So you can caulk things, apparently. I guess so. Like. I don't know. Hmm. What? Do you want to talk about it? Oh my god. I mean, you know who I'm married to, so. I, I know I you. I even surprised you. No, no. I also have. I got cans of air from like 
eight years ago. I got. I'm like, I got the most random. This, sh into, this has devolved into what's on Zach's desk. <laughs> <laughs> Walk in the stream, like what up? Look at my. I mean, look at my huge cock. <laughs> oh God. This is why I'm in therapy. Let's see what else I can get. Ooh. Oh, okay. So a stein would be great, but like like a metal tankard, like oh. Oh. Bean, I saw that. Stop it. Stop. Bean, stop. I want I want a steel tankard. I want a tankard with with Kitarino on it. That's what I want. Decal transfer decoration is billed for separately. One to eight spot color decoration minimum print. Four color process print minimum 250. 250? Oh. Oh, the Ren Fair. I haven't been to the Ren Fair in so long. Ugh. Oh, that was so good. Wait, where's the... Where's... Where's YouTube? Where's YouTube music? Or studio audio library. Son of a... I don't even remember what it's called. I don't know. I have no idea. I have I have lost control of the vehicle. I never really had. I only have... I, I got like... I got like two fingers on the wheel at this point. We're just like... Meh, 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 meh. All right. Let's see. Ambient... Calm, calm, ambient music. All right, let's try this. Two moons. What the hell is this? This kind of sounds X Filesy. Isn't the full moon supposed to make us crazy? How is two moons supposed to be better and calm? Just saying. Maybe they offset. Maybe it's like like opposite magnets. Listen, moons have okay. moons have poles. They have magnetic poles. And mag no one knows how magnets work. Maybe that's how moons work, too. Oh, all right. All right, I guess I'll have to give that one to you. Listen. Be nice. Allie. When am I not nice? Not you. Well, you two. Oh. The two of you together. Be nice. Also, When am I not nice? I don't know, but whatever. Whoa. But like whatever and stuff. There's like the synthesizer like came my in. My existence, my goal in existence is to be nice. So you be nice. I am being nice. There's, I'm getting some Pink Floyd vibes off of this. Oh, that's right. Hallie would have your address. Yeah. She has. Look, just a little I'm not baby evil. Custom tankards for the modern barbarian. Etsy has custom tankards, but I haven't seen any that do good images yet. I mean, I didn't start looking that up or anything. Well, no, I know. Not, not you. You would never. Nope. You would never. This oak bottom mug. Clearly not. These are no, I, no, no. Mugs and tankards. It was Ally, but I completely like um, did not keep the label. Paintings on the label. Gone. I have their address. Right. Everyone can evil plot against everyone else. That's kind of what we do here. This is, this is this this circle is basic. This is basically a circle jerk of, of, of harmless um, mischief, I guess. Is that is that fair to say? 
I'm all about them, the harm, harmless mischief. Ah, is it? Are you are you also about the harmful mischief in small doses? No, no. not particularly. No, okay. Ooh. Like I'll give you shit, <laughs> but yes. I, I'm not about the actual like harmful mischief. Allie does just send people shit. It's true. That's how we have a. Uh, that's how we have a. Uh, a cross stitch of uh, Shady Pines Ma, which is just beautiful, by the way. It's fantastic. God, there it is. There's the what are frogs. It's in the random. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. This is. This is the best. Where? Where's the? Where's the sherry, my jig? Okay. Let's see. This one is great. Yes, select again. Bible for 400, please. During the second plague, these amphibians came out of the water. Stephen, what are frogs? Right. What are frogs? <laughs> uh... <laughs> oh, that's the best. That is just the best. <laughs> oh, yep. All right, hold on. I, I got something from... Oh, okay. So I have, I've been instructed to show this to you, Jonas. Um, let me see if I can get it to. So this is this is a um, a cross stitch that or an embroidery that Sabrina has seen before. But come on, focus, fo focus thing. But yeah. There you go. <laughs> like just that's that's art. That is art. That's a classic right there. Um Oh yeah, no for sure. Like like the big ass brick of a cell phone. That's that's the that's it right there. Uh All right. Well, this is um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the night devolved, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Ah, <sighs> and it's, I think it's, I think we're, we're, we're good anyway. Um, this was a good one, y'all. Um, I, uh. Ooh, more PC parts arrived in us. Yes, you gotta you gotta post pictures of the build in the uh, in the the tech channel. We got the general tech channel. You gotta post that stuff in there. It's gonna be so good. Um, so yeah, we had a we had a good one tonight, y'all. Um, I was I was really nervous about this, but I think it turned out really good. Um, I really appreciate y'all being here. Um, I appreciate you know just hanging out and we had a lot of good discussion and um this may be like an every other wednesday thing if y'all are down for it um i don't know i'll we we can we can figure out the night later um but i don't know we might do this every couple of weeks we'll we'll maybe we'll plan it again in a couple of weeks um i would say um follow me on twitter if you're on twitter um join the discord join the discord if you're not already in it and let me where's the button 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 who's got the button um so i don't know you put it on cooldown oh i don't have a cooldown um but yeah join the discord um we might i might even spin up a channel for it on the discord that's right jonas cooldown 
cool down motherfucker um but yeah let's 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 talk about let's talk about that um you know on the <gasps> you made it back for like the last two seconds um but yeah let's 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 talk about that on the discord um uh if if you are interested in like making like a group therapy thing every couple weeks where we just sit down and and talk about stuff um and just you know whatever's on our minds or whatever it may be then let's do that like let's let's make that a thing send me a send me a, a message on discord send me a pm and we can uh we can figure that out if you would like to be on stream with me talking about it i would absolutely love that i love ha having people in my ear like these two over here um who yeah right it's what he enjoys it's true um so yes i cannot wait to look at those pics all right so go to the go to the discord for the pics of ns's new pc parts stay to talk about the therapy stuff um and um yeah i think uh i think we'll it'll be it'll be really good um friday friday night we are back on our bullshit it'll be friday night happy hour we're gonna go in the realm i've done some things um i've done several things and only Lollipop knows about them, and Lollipop is sworn to secrecy until Friday night. So, we will talk about them. And they are, ex they are exciting, and I'm very happy with the way things are progressing there, and yeah. Um, so, I hope to see y'all on Friday night. Until then, be good to each other. I love y'all, and I will see you next time. Bye.